And our third main topic today gets submitted to us by Connor. And Connor writes, Greetings, John and crew. Love the show. Thank you so much, man. It has been revealed by Paramount that the next Transformers movie will be called Transformers Rise of the Beasts and has a June 24th, 2022 release date, which is crazy. Rob, that's one year from now. That's I know. one year from now. Uh, so about a year. What do you think of this news and bring on the filthy? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And yeah, listen, we've known for a while that Paramount has been targeting doing more Transformers movies. I mean, go back four or five years, Rob, when they did the big Transformers. Remember, they did that big Transformers writer's room where they got, right. you know, I think that Steven S. Knight, Steven Spielberg, and they brought in like 20 of these grand the creators and they plotted things out. So listen, we knew they're going to do more. And with the positive public reaction resurgence to the Transformers brand because of Bumblebee, which Bumblebee was fantastic because of that resurgence in approval, they felt emboldened by that, but we've really been sitting around waiting for what they were going to do. Now we know what they're going to do. It's Transformers rise of the beasts. This comes to us from the folks over at cinema blend who write, this title was announced at a Transformers virtual event with producers Laura, uh, Lorenzo de Bonaventura, by the way, nice guy, uh, revealing that Transformers Rise of the Beasts, i.e. the movie that Creed II Stephen uh, Capel Jr. was hired to direct, will bring in the Beast Wars mythology. The Predacons, Maximals, and Terracons will all appear in Rise of the Beasts, which will primarily be set in 1994 Brooklyn, New York although there will be some action in Peru. Regarding why the next Transformers movie is pulling from the Beast Wars canon, Lorenzo de Bonaventura stated that it felt like the prior movies had exhausted the Autobot versus Decepticon conflict, and he and other creative minds wanted to show different tribes of Transformers. It was also announced that Optimus Prime and Bumblebee will both appear in Rise of the Beasts. And by the way, Rampage Predacon sends in a super chat badge in the live chat. Thank you, Rampage. All right. So we've got this new movie coming. Whatever. Look, I, you guys know I grew up as a massive Transformers nerd, right? I mean, I had, I would, not only did I have every toy, I would cut up the boxes they came in and put the character figure and their power bar meter up on my bedroom wall. I clearly did not have a lot of ladies coming into my bedroom at the time. So I would put that stuff up on my wall. I, I love them. I love the first Transformers movie that Michael Bay did. I, I will defend that movie all day. I hated every single other Transformers movie Bay did. And then along came Bumblebee, loved it, re-sparked my passion for it again. And I've been looking forward to seeing another Transformers movie. But this notion that, oh, we've exhausted the Autobots and Decepticons thing. It's like, dude. You barely scratch the surface of the Autobots and the Decepticons. You barely scratch the surface. And you did so with a bunch of absolutely crappy movies. And if you're worried about that, reboot the franchise. And by the way, if you're doing it in 1994, this is, you may not want to call it a reboot, but it's obviously a form of a reboot. Because, I mean, obviously, due in 1994, a lot of things contradict with other movies. It's fine, whatever. Here's my worry, Rob. My worry is, you have had a hard time showing us that you can deliver a quality movie consistently with just Autobots and Decepticons that, again, you barely scratch the surface of either of those two groups. And now, you're going to just... Dump in, ah, let's throw in Maximals and, and all these, let's throw in all these things. Let's throw in Beast Wars too. And let's throw in this and that. And like, I'm not going to lie to you, Rob. I'm going to hope <laughs> for the best. I am going to hope for the best. This sounds like a disaster. It sounds like a complete disaster waiting to happen. Now, there have been other movies that look like recipes for complete disasters that when they came out, I ended up loving them. And hopefully that'll be the case here. Hopefully I'll keep my fingers crossed that'll be the case here. But I, I don't know, man. Listen to this thing and to know that it's coming out in just one year. I, I, 
again, you're going to have to forgive me if I feel a little bit pessimistic. As pro-Transformers as I am, you have to forgive me if I feel a little bit pessimistic. Uh, bringing Steve Kappel Jr. on board, I thought he did a nice job with Creed 2. Uh, Creed 2, I, to me, Rob, wasn't as good as the first one. But, no. But, I mean, he's no, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's not like... Um, it's not like, though, that he doesn't have chops. I thought the second film was quite good. I thought he did a really nice job with it. So that's nice. That's a good thing. But again, nothing else about this thing sounds confidence-inducing. I don't know, Rob. Am I being overly pessimistic here? You hear about all this. What do you think about it? Well, gosh, overly pessimistic, John. It's not like we're looking at the gold standard of cinematic <laughs> excellence and storytelling i i mean uh, the franchise has been very it's been very all hit and miss about all these things i mean i don't know about the later mythology of all of it but it, it just <clears throat> i mean i feel like like everything else it's been a little soulless you know uh and i think what it needs is i mean this direction seems it doesn't seem like it's got a lot of heart in it. I could be wrong, but I would like to see it restored to the luster. I mean, I, you know, I, I like the first one and, and I like the last one, um, because they were, they were, they had heart. Yeah. And I think, I think that's what, you know, ultimately the, the whole franchise, it's, it, it, it goes back to, to me, it, it, it's like the iron giant, you know, you go back to like that and, and, and it's it's man and machine and 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 all of that kind of relationship. That's that's the core of it all, because you you know your human characters are are just as important in order to make the movies grounded, and you have to have feeling in them. And um, I think that's where they're going to live or die. Uh, yeah, again, and I loved Bumblebee, man. I I was so like I was really. I was encouraged when we found out Travis Knight was directing Bumblebee because he had he had a really short, a small track record, but a really good track record. And I love the way you put that. He brought heart. Like, I thought that first Transformers movie had heart. I thought Bumblebee absolutely had heart. Everything else in between was utter well, drivel I garbage. Mean, dude, you know, like, I love my kaiju movies. I love my giant yeah. robot fighting movies and all that. And I am a staunch defender of the last 45 minutes of Dark of the Moon because – as an effects se sequence, a long-term effects sequence with urban mayhem, it's pretty unparalleled. But, you know, the, the first film still had the idea of a boy in his sentient car that is also a transforming robot. And I think that kind of worked. And it, it's a way to get into the films. But, you know, there's a lot of people that the Transformers themselves are the star of the movies. They don't need human beings at all. But if that's the case, you still have to anthropomorphize them. You still have to give them the emotional content in order to make the films um, palatable, that, that, that have resonance. And I thought Bumblebee, like you said, Travis Knight did a great job of bringing that heart to the franchise. And he, he, and he I did think it. that's how those movies work. He did it by <laughs> applying the KISS method, right? The keep it simple, stupid. Because in Bumblebee... We didn't have, you know, 65 Transformers. We had Bumblebee. We had the two Decepticons. Optimus makes a little appearance at the end. Obviously, there's that great opening Cybertron sequence, that opening Cybertron. But really, for the most part, there were three Transformers in it. Not that you have to follow that formula at all, I'm saying. But now it just seems like Lorenzo de Bonaventura, who is great, by the way, um, is saying... Ah, let's just throw everything in there. Let's just throw it all in there and let's just go. But I, I get, let, let me be clear. There have been other projects that I felt were going to be complete disasters and I ended up loving them. So here's, here we go. Let's see if Steve Cable can do well. Uh, by the way, we got Sam P and RM send in super chat badges in the live chat. Thanks for the support guys. Appreciate that uh, very much. So let's see, let's see how we good. Listen, as long as you got a capable director in the director's chair, a lot of good things can happen, and they do have a capable director here, so let's see how it goes. Question is for you guys. What do you make of this news? I'm a little bit pessimistic about it. I ain't going to lie, but I'm going to hope for the best. Maybe you love the news. Maybe you think it's fantastic. Maybe you think it's terrible. Whatever it is you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Okay, guys.